Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to be looking at the beta function and its properties. So, the beta function is represented by an integral which is giving us this expression. And this integral form can be rewritten in a short form as this. So, henceforth, whenever we see this expression, we know it is the beta function and it is written as m which is derived from this m n which is derived from this n right so what we want to do is to see how we can re-express this beta function in terms of the gamma function which we have looked at in our previous video so but before we look at that it's important for us to see other ways in which we can represent the beta function. So we have beta function can also be re-expressed in other forms. So if we use this substitution x equal to y all over 1 plus y, we can get these parts of it from here, which leads to 1 over 1 plus y. And to get this part, we just differentiate this one and differentiate this we get this expression at this point we can make our substitution so wherever we see this 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 we can substitute into this expression and that leads to this expression and from this point if we resimplify we notice that they have the same um, expression we can collect the powers together and Resimplify and that leads to this. So from this point, if we add all this one up, we get this expression. So this is another way of representing the beta function. Okay, so at this point, we can decide to um, look at the gamma function, to recall the gamma function once more and see how we can connects both the beta function and the gamma function together. So recall from the gamma function that this expression is equal to this. This is the gamma function, right? If we make a substitution of this form that x equal to sigma y, if we differentiate this, we get this and substitute back into this expression, we get this. On simplification we have this now this part is a constant we can bring it out so it can be respects it can be re-expressed as this expression so but we can still go back to using this one so with this expression we can have multiply both sides by this expression and differential with respect to Sigma from zero to infinity so we can do we can carry out this um, stuff on this particular part and see what we get so just by multiplying this this to both sides of the equation to this one we have this now if we integrate from zero to infinity to both sides we have this expression now we notice that this one is a constant we can take it back and it leads to this expression. So at this point, we can resimplify, take care of this inner part from here to this part and see what it will lead to. So this part here, we want to concentrate on it. But before we do that, let's recall that we have the gamma all over this equal to this expression. So if we compare this expression with this, we can bring out something unique from it. So this part from here to this part is this part. Now we compare this one, if we compare with this, you notice that we have e raised power sigma, e raised power sigma. In this place, our sigma is representing our y, while our sigma here, which is a constant in this part, will represent our one plus y, which is a constant in this part. So if you notice our sigma is just at the denominator of this expression. 
while the numerator is gamma n, which is coming from this n. So if you look at these parts, this y raised power n is the same thing as sigma raised power m plus n minus 1. So we expect that here will be gamma m plus n divided by, if you check this one, this is a sigma, which is a constant, sigma raised power n. So in this part, our constant will be 1 plus y, which is 1 plus y raised power m plus n. So this one and this will have the same power. So everything inside this integral is given by this expression. So if we make substitution, we have this expression. So now we have gamma, gamma m, this part, this part, this integral, integral. Everything here reduces to gamma m plus n divided by 1 plus y, m plus n, leaving y raised by n minus 1 dy as this. Now, from this point, we notice that this is a constant. We can send it out, and that leads to, um, we can, okay, we can even take care of this part first. If you check this part properly, you notice that it looks like your gamma n. So, but because here is m, it becomes gamma m equal to this part. And we can send this one out, and that leads to gamma n, gamma m equal to gamma m plus n, integral of this expression. And if you recall that we have re-expressed the beta function as this before from our previous slide. So everything here will just become beta m plus n. So that gives us, so if we know that this one is equal to this, then we can replace this one as beta m plus n and that leads to these parts. So we now have gamma n, gamma m, equal to gamma m plus n, then beta n comma m. So if I make this one a subject formula, then my beta m n will be equal to gamma n gamma m all over gamma m plus gamma n. So this is the connection between the beta function and the gamma function. We can quickly take a look at how this particular one can be simplified, a typical example, and that gives us this. So if we have everything here as raised power 3, everything as raised power 5, we can quickly show that this one will be equal to 1 over 4. Just by saying if m minus 1 equal to 3, that means my m will be equal to 4. Because m minus 1 equal to 3, then m will be equal to 4. And I will put my m here as what? 4. Then if here is 5, that means m plus m is 5. If my m is already 4, that means my m will be 1. So I'll have 1, gamma 1, gamma 4, all over gamma 1 plus 4, which is 5. And we have seen that gamma 1 is 1, gamma 4 is 3 factorial, gamma 5 is 4 factorial. By the time we cancel out, we have 1 over 4. You can use any other method to solve this and you still get 1 over 4. That's the beauty of the beta function. Right, so let's move on to another situation where we have... If we recall the beta function to be this expression, right, we can also make this substitution. Let x equal to sine squared theta. So whenever we see our x, we replace with what? Sine squared theta, uh, which is more or less like another way of representing the beta function. Okay, so we have dx equal to this. We replace 1 minus x as 1 minus sine square theta, which is equal to what? Cos square theta. I think there was a mistake here. So it's supposed to be cos square theta. So at the end of the day, we can make our substitution and it will lead to this one. So we have x, which is x2 raised by m2 times m minus 1 theta. 1 minus x is cos squared n minus 1 theta dot my dx is 2 sine theta cos theta d theta, which is this. So on simplification, we can factorize our 2 out. These 2 goes out. Sine theta takes care of one of these, which is, which can be, which will be seen in the second, uh, like the pre next slide. Okay, but also take note that the limit will change from 0 to 1, because if here is 0, this side becomes, zero 
our theta becomes zero because sine is zero will give us zero and if here is one sine what will give us one is sine 90 so sine 90 will give us one so 90 is pi over 2 that's how we got this one okay so the next slide we have this from there we move on to this other stage remember everything here is still the beta function which is still equal to gamma n gamma n all over gamma n plus n okay so if we make this one a subject formula two goes down so we have two coming down here right and if we make this substitution 2m minus 1 equal to a 2n minus 1 equal to b because wherever we see this will replace with a wherever we see this will replace with b then this expression will reduce to this expression so in this case our m if you make m the survey from now becomes 1 plus a divided by 2 1 plus b divided by 2 then substitute here so we now have this expression we can quickly take a look at a simple problem where we have sine a representing 5 b representing 7 so if we're asked to integrate this expression we can show that it's equal to 1 over 120 what we just need to do is to say okay if 5 is here we just put 5 plus 1 all over 2 that's 6 over 2 that's gamma 3 7 plus 1 is 8 8 over 2 which is 4 so we have gamma 2 gamma 4 all over 2 gamma a plus b which is 5 plus 7 12 plus 2 14 divided by 2 7 all over gamma 7 by the time you simplify you get 1 over 120 good so let's move on so if we also let 2n equal to 1 that's wherever we see 2n we replace with what 1 so here will be 1 minus 1 and that cancels this one making this one equal to cos 0 we'll have this part here and from here wherever you see your n you replace with what half n will become half wherever you see n you replace with half so n here becomes half so this one will now reduce to this part at this point we can see that if we solve problem that is related to this we can plug in the values here and get the value for this okay so if we also let m equal to n then we have this instead of it to be n it becomes m instead of here it to be n it becomes m so here it becomes m plus m now remember that this one is sine 2m minus 1 theta cos 2m minus 1 theta now recall from sine 2 theta double angle we have 2 sine theta cos theta and if we send these two down it becomes half of sine 2 theta equal to sine theta cos theta so if we replace this one with this into this expression we have this expression so 1 over 2 raised power 2m minus 1 and sine 2m minus 1 2 theta d theta equal to this this one still remains so we move on to the next stage this is a constant we factorize it out we have this expression so now let 2 theta equal to 5 so that d theta equal to d phi all over 2 substitute into this part we have sine 2m minus 1 file the file all over 2 equal to gamma m gamma m all over 2 gamma m 2m now here m becomes 2m now at this point we have our pi over 2 and 0 we change to pi and 0 why because when theta is 0 phi will be 0 when theta is pi over 2 phi will be pi so that's why we have this substitution now these two we take care of this one so that it becomes one over two raised to power two raised to power two m equal to this expression so we move on to the next stage at this point from here we notice that our pi can be represented as pi over two times two so from one of the properties of indefinite uh, definite integral we have 
this one. So this two comes out. This two comes out. And we have 2 all over 2 raised to the power 2m. Integral of this equal to this. On simplification, we have this expression. That's making this one stand alone. Then followed by this. Followed by this. Because at this point, we notice that this expression is equal to this. And that this expression is also equal to this part, which we solved earlier. And then we have, we we'll make this one the Soviet formula. That's this gamma 2m, the Soviet formula. Remember that this part here is this, which is coming from the beta function. And we have also shown that that beta function from previous slide is equal to this part. As a result, if we make 2m the survey formula, that's gamma 2m the survey formula, we have this expression. And this expression is called the Legendary's um, duplication formula. I hope this helps. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.